Hey, what's up? I'm gonna mix it up a little bit more. I know I'm kind of on a long creative streak, but um, so tonight's my night game night where I catch up with friends and we play some games, you know, cards, board games, whatever, do our thing, and of course, card night turns into beer night and gossip night. Um, I don't, you know, just talk about whatever. You never have any serious topics and BS about things we saw over the week, things like that. You know, I, I guess it counts as gossip, right? Um, so. Someone introduced me to some of these these crazy people out there, and I've mentioned them a couple times that I've seen, but I got turned on to a couple new ones of these, uh, I, I, the whatever the term is or something, but they're basically prototype, or I should say, not prototypes, but copies of Elliot Rogers, and um, they're they're hilarious. They're all idiots. Um, this is, you know, was, these are all school shooters waiting to happen, and they're. Well, I guess you might as well laugh until something happens. It's kind of my sick mentality on it because you really can't do anything. Like, you know, these people are just nuts. Um, and they feel that, like, they are living in a Soviet gulag because they don't have a girlfriend. Um, and it, it's just such an interesting thing because they're all, say, early 20s, which is that millennial. And the, using that term, which is some people say that moves to like the 80s or something like that which puts me into that bracket that is my n-word you call me that you're losing teeth so i just want to give a forewarning to everyone um i really don't like that term and i don't like to be associated with those people but um uh, just that whole generation for, for good reason but um all things aside with this whole thing it's kind of interesting for me is as i've mentioned before too with another video which i think i forgot to upload is uh how the internet has given us this incredible ability to interact through so many different people and so many different languages and so much. Um, YouTube is especially, you know, people, I can watch a, I could subscribe to a blog um, from some guy in Afghanistan or Brazil or, you know, and you can make friends and text and stuff like that. It's a wonderful device that could be, I'm not going to get too far into it, but, you know, it, it, it's an but people have created these little, like, cults, quite literally cults, where they won't interact with anybody unless they have the same mindset. And I think that's such a sad thing because, well, I'm not going to get into it, whatever. But in this whole little circle, I, I had to go poke my head and all that and just laugh and laugh and laugh because there's so much in there. And I would highly recommend, like, to just look for the Elliot Rogers kind of people. They're crazy. They're all nuts. Um... But what was really interesting is, is it is, quite literally, I wasn't even trying to be funny, cult behavior. Um, me kind of liking conspiracy theories. I mean, I, I don't really buy into any of them because for me what's interesting is the application of scientific method into a conspiracy theory. And some of them go quite far. And it's actually, it's just interesting because... You know, some things we know now that were, like, crazy theories were real. Um, you know, there was a time where we thought that we were, the sun was orbiting us, things like that. And to speak out about it would be the same way as if someone said something about, you know, an alien shot JFK. Um, you know. And I think, like, that's always kind of, like, my rule about, like, I like to read into them. It's just a hobby. But uh, to when you can no longer apply scientific method that's when you have to walk away. And uh, I'm not going to talk about one that I'm completely sold on because you can continually use scientific method. And the defense is based of, uh, you know, it's a conspiracy theory, but it's all scientific method. And that it's... What's kind of scary to me is the fact that you're applying the idea of facts and this is no longer acceptable which to me is kind of a warning sign for things. I mean, we've seen this throughout history, um, and I'm not going to veer off too much, but what's kind of funny for the, this whole thing is they talk about all sorts of different things, like how the game, relationships are rigged, things like that. Um, but because it's a, a hive mind kind of mentality, is these people who have had this, this uh, almost impossible success of... Uh, managing a relationship are not only outcast, but their advice is uh, both shunned and uh, considered wrong. 
So really the only way you can fix your problem is to ask people and talk to people who don't have any experience in the matter. It's basically saying, which is cult behavior, you know, uh, uh, for it's saying don't go to the doctor just pray your broken leg away or uh you know and uh i don't mean that as any sort of insults towards prayer and or spirituality but you know if you break your leg you should talk to a medical expert um or anybody with a background in medicine uh i would highly recommend doing that but it, it the thing about it that really got me was the entitlement factor um i don't want to dish out too much on my personal life exactly. Um, I don't mind talking a little bit about it, but I was thinking back was, uh, like many people who live in the United States, I can trace, thankfully, I'm very lucky, I can trace my, my family history back from before we came to the United States. I don't have um, Native American or Indian, as some people still say, blood in me. Um, I, I know my whole background and all that, but it, it's like, I had family that literally came from a war-torn nation. There was nothing. So they came over to this broke experiment, or that the other side of the family, it came over to broke nothingness. Um, at the time, uh, you know, the United States has had some struggles, and colonial times were rather rough uh, for all except for a certain few. And I'm not at all speaking negatively to this country or its history. It is what it is. But quite, you know, people coming from a war-torn nation here. It's like, it's better than a war-torn nation. And, like, I'm not trying to say, like, my family's amazingly perfect or better than everybody. It's how many of us did that? I'm not just here. Throughout human history, there was nothing. So you went somewhere else where there wasn't anything, but at least it wasn't as bad. You know, you went from terrible to horrible or however you want to line your adverbs. And um, they had nothing. They came over there and they made their lives. They learned a new language. They faced bigotry and sucked it up. And I mean, that's something why I guess I have certain feelings about current immigration and how, you know, it, it it's, has its threats and uh, downsides because you have to come in to really assimilate with a culture and accept it and still be part of your own culture. I totally get that's tricky, but everybody else is, I don't know, I, you know, um, there's people who aren't doing it now, and that's praised, and I don't really have the highest regard for that. Um, you know, people quite literally came with the clothes on their back, and they had lives, and not only lives, yes, the majority of them had, uh, pretty awful lives, but almost everybody who came over during the Industrial Revolution, and even not even coming over, the people who lived here were here forever. It was a very rough time. Um, as an economist, I can safely say industrialization is a really nasty product. It is a nasty experience. It's the nature of the game, and it's kind of hard to explain how to really get into that, but I really sidetracked myself here, so... But that's what happens when you have a blittering idiot. You are what you drink. So, back to what I was trying to go. Is this whole entitlement mentality, it's just, it shows how far it's run away. It's, you are entitled just by being alive to have someone like you so much that they have a romantic desire to be with you and want to build a life with you and have children with you. And if not, it is acceptable to hate these people. Because they're, oh, this whole side group, they, they freaking hate women. Oh my goodness, do they all hate women. Uh, it is, you hear some uh, Goebbels-like speech of how women should be treated and all that. And, uh, you know, they, they know how to do it in the Middle East. When they throw acid in a woman's face, that's, that's a good thing. So it's like, and they are completely baffled why that's also not helping. They're uh, picking up chicks because, uh, surprisingly enough, I mean, I might have my own weaknesses when it comes to dating at some times in life, but I got my bright side. And one of the things I haven't learned, if you're trying to ask a girl out, don't say that you really support the idea of punching her in the face just because she's a girl. I don't really think that that's... If anybody learned anything from that, 
I'm really kind of worried for you. But it... I know I've kind of been bouncing around, but, you know, this is what happens when you've been drinking and hanging out with your friends, playing cards, and sucking at cribbage, but these things happen, and as I said, I've just kind of been in a creative mood, so I'd like to throw some things in, but yeah, if you ever need an absolute laugh, check these people out, um, they, they have so many different little things, and it, it, it's so interesting to me, because as I said, as someone who enjoys reading about conspiracy theories, this is absolutely a cult and a conspiracy theory about, like, this whole idea of just need, they can't get dates because of the system or, you know, and as I said, because they're all gigantic bigots, it's, you know, the Jew Masons. It, it's crazy. Um, it's a good laugh. So I'm definitely be doing some more research and laughing at these people with chicks.